All right, guys, they were back out here working on this 84944. All right guys, the first thing I want to do is continue cleaning up this engine bay and I'm going to start right here by replacing this old hood latch. You can see that I've got one here freshly plated. And in order to remove the old one, all you need to do is remove the cable and then drill out these four pop rivets. Make sure that you use a bit that is about the size of the hole if you go too large, you may end up drilling out too much material there, and then you're never gonna get this back on. Once you've got your bit selected, then you're just gonna take your time. Now that the new hood latch is on, I'm going to finish installing some of these radiator hoses. I now have all the radiator hoses installed, so next I'm going to install the new injectors that just came in. So here's a quick look at the injectors, and as you can see, they look really nice. I had these sent off to be cleaned and flow matched. They also repainted them and replaced the O-rings. And anytime you remove the fuel rail, I recommend replacing these old rubber O-rings since when you go to reinstall it, they can cut and tear very easily. If this O-ring here tears, then you'll end up with a vacuum leak, which will cause a very hard start. And if this one up here gets cut at the rail, then you can end up with fuel spraying all over the place. However, new O-rings once they're replaced are less likely to tear and less likely to cause a fire. Fuel rail is now in. Next I'll install the new spark plug wires. And now I have the spark plug wires on, so next I'm going to work on the accessories and some of these smaller vacuum lines and we'll be almost ready to fire this thing up. Now that I have the spark plug wires on, the next thing I'm going to do is start installing the accessories. As you can see, the AC compressor down there is really filthy, but I also can't use it since there's a bolt broken off down in there. Now I could try and remove it, but I have a bunch of these and so I'm just going to replace it with a nicer one. I have the compressor off now and you can see the broken bolt. I was hoping to just replace this compressor to forego any drilling of bolts. Unfortunately, 
This one here stripped out on me and I can't transfer this piece over to the replacement compressor without drilling it out. So anyway, as you can see, this has a different setup than this one here. So that's why I'm having to transfer everything. It's not going to be one of those where I can just drop it in. So once I get this drilled out, then I'll be able to put it on the replacement compressor, which won't be this one. I actually have a newer one but I just brought this one out since it had this piece on here to show you the difference here. But anyway, once I get it off, I'll transfer it and we'll get it in. So I have this bolt drilled out now and as I mentioned originally, I just wanted to replace this compressor entirely to save me from having to drill out this broken bolt there. But unfortunately, the only compressors that I have in working condition are later ones and they don't fit on the early bracket you can see that the mounts are a little bit different also the bolt holes are different sizes so I'm gonna to talk to the owner and see if he just wants to replace this compressor altogether or he just wants me to clean this up and drill that bolt out after all While I'm waiting to figure out the compressor situation, I'm going to go ahead and install the power steering pump. This is the old one here, and I'm going to be replacing it with this newly rebuilt one. You can see that this power steering line's crimp, so I'm going to go ahead and replace it as well. Just removing the old crimp line now. So here's the old crimp line. And he's putting the new one in now. So, all right, we've just about got the power steering pump connected here. We're going to leave it loose for now because we're going to order some new copper washers. I removed the broken bolt last night, so I'm going to get this compressor cleaned up. The owner said if it doesn't work, then we'll replace it later on. And I'm also going to get the starter cleaned up as well. I now have the compressor and the starter cleaned up and repainted, so next I'll get them in. I now have the alternator and the AC compressor on, so next I'll install the new belts. I was installing the slave cylinder when I started pressing on it here and found it was a little too soft and I've also got some fluid running down it, so it looks like I'm going to be replacing this. All right, so the Clutch Slave Rebuild Kit just arrived, so I'm going to get it rebuilt so that way I can get it and the starter back on. So here's a quick look at the Red 944. You can see that I have all the vacuum lines connected now. Fuel lines are connected. Fuel injectors were sent off to be cleaned. Fuel rail is on. I've got the new distributor and spark plug wires on as well. The accessories are on. I have the alternator and the air conditioner belt on. I just need to install the power steering belt and do a few things down there. The starter's in. So this thing is almost ready to start up, but I just got to make sure that everything is perfect before I can do that. All right, we're getting really close to firing this thing up. As you can see, I've got the airflow meter here. I just need to get it cleaned up and replace some of these parts. I'm going to be replacing this and the cap that goes down in there. And once that's done, I can get the air box back on. I also have some new copper washers for the power steering pump. I'd like to get that done and have the reservoir filled before I fire this thing up. But once I have the air box in and the power steering fixed, then I can top this thing off with the oil and we'll be ready to start her up. I got the airflow meter all cleaned up and plugged back in. I also replaced that rusty bracket, the clip, and that plug there. And I've got a new filter in here. This car came with a can in, but I'm gonna be putting the stock filter back in here. Here in a moment, I'm gonna clean up the cover here and get it back on. I got the air box cover cleaned up and it's back on now. I even capped this off here. The next thing I need to do is clean up this bracket here and get it back on. And then I just need to put the battery back in and we'll be ready to start this thing up. Power steering pumps now on with new copper washers, the fluids filled and the belts on. 
So here's a quick look at everything in the daylight. You can see that this engine looks fantastic. So today what I need to do is clean up this area here. You can see there's a lot of sanding dust, but once I get it cleaned up, it should look pretty good. And I'm gonna be replacing this blower motor shroud here. I have one that I'm gonna pull from a parts car that's in better condition. And as you know, there's some goop that holds it on there and it's freezing cold out here. So it's gonna to be tough to try and remove it. So I've got my heat gun over here and what I'm gonna do is heat it up and I should be able to pull it right off. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is get rid of all this dust. I don't want that getting down in there so I need to get it all cleaned up before I remove that shroud. So I have the dust wiped off now. I'll be able to clean it a little bit better once I remove the shroud, but I just didn't want any of that stuff getting down in there. So next I'll take my heat gun here and start heating up this goop at the bottom here. Once you have it heated up, it just pulls right off. So usually I'll pull apart and then clean it up before you guys even see it. But today I thought that I would show you guys what some of these parts look like before I pull them. As you can see, I've got the parts car here, and this is the blower motor shroud that I'm gonna be using. You can see that it's in excellent condition. It just needs to be cleaned up. So again, I'll be doing the same thing over here at the parts car. All right, I've got it off. As you can see, this one is in much better condition. I just need to get it cleaned up. So now that the new shroud is in, I'm gonna start cleaning up some of this wiring here and get the battery back in. So over here we have this red 944 today. I'm just tidying up a few things. You can see I've got the wiring done now. I've got the air box back in and I'm gonna be swapping out this washer reservoir here. And then I'm going to be replacing these caps here to make this engine bay look a little bit better. Put the battery back in and I've got a new blower motor shroud back on here and the only thing really left to do here is just tidy up a few things and then put the exhaust back on then we're going to start this up then I've got to just try and finish some of this body work here and this thing will be ready to go to paint all right so the Sinja Bay is looking pretty good however there are a few areas mainly right here that I need to clean up you can see on this side I've already got some new nuts put on here and I need to replace this tired looking strut hat on this side as well. As you can see that I have one for each side that I'll be replacing. And in order to remove this, all you need to do is remove this nut here. And the easiest way to do that is to use an offset oxygen sensor tool and just put it on there. And then you're just going to take a six millimeter hex key and stick it down in the strut just like that and turn it and it should come loose. All right, so I've got everything cleaned up and you can see just how nice everything turned out. I've even got the dipstick painted and put back in. So today I'm gonna to be replacing this tank since it has a hole in it. I've got one from parts car that I'm gonna be installing. I also have a brand new cap and new fittings that's gonna go on here. And if you look over here, you can see that the early cars used a clear tube, but this one has seen better days. So what I'm gonna do is take this out and just use it as a sample to go get some new clear line. I removed all the old tubing and replaced it. You can see I've got all new line running down here to the reservoir and this is how it's supposed to look. It's hard to believe that this tubing over here once looked like this. Here's a quick look at the replacement washer tank. You can see it looks much better than the old one. I also replaced this cap and both of these fittings. So here's the washer pump that came with the car. As you can see, the nozzles here are broken off, so I won't be able to use it. I have another one here with good nozzles, but I'll need to test it and then get it cleaned up. And as you would expect, this one's seized up. So neither one of those pumps worked, and I was looking around and I do have another one. If this one doesn't work, then I'll order one and we'll put it in next time. All right, James is out here bolting up the A-arms and the sway bar. 
James is assembling the exhaust now. James has the exhaust on now and as you can see we welded on a new tip and repainted the muffler. Got the battery installed now you can see I replaced the terminals and I also replaced the old rusty battery tie down. The only thing left to do is start filling the fluids up and we'll be ready to start this thing up. So I just tried starting the car and it sounds like the starter isn't engaging so I'm going to order a new one. All right, the new starter just came in. So I'm gonna get it on and see if we can't get this car fired up. I've got the old starter out now. Next I'll install the new one and reconnect the battery. New starter's in. I'll go up here. And I've also got the battery connected now. So let's try and fire this thing up. Ignition switch needs a little work. Ah, oh, see, that's what it was doing with the old starter. It might be this ignition switch here. It's kind of jammed up. Oh, there we go. Oh, she fired it right up. Plenty of oil pressure. Let's go out here. And watch her run. Sounding good. Alright guys, now that this car is running again, the next thing we need to do is clean up the interior and get it sent to paint. So that's where we'll pick up next time. If you'd like to stay up to date with some of the projects we're working on around the shop, be sure to join us on Facebook. I'll leave a link in the description below. I also want to thank everyone who supports this channel on Patreon since these videos would not be possible without you. But anyway guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you next time.